Good morning friends, welcome back to our series on international auditing standards. In my last video, I discussed on ISA 300, planning and audit of financial statements. And I think as a professional, you must be aware by now that how to plan and what actions are required to be taken before any audit is undertaken. Today in this video, I'm going to discuss ISA 230, audit documentation, which requires the auditor to document the aspects of audit engagement as and when they happen. Though each standard has certain requirements what to document, however, ISA 230 covers the documentation responsibility of auditor in general. Again, this is important for the organizations too and not only for the auditor because ultimately it's the responsibility of the organization to provide all the necessary documents and information which shall form part of the audit documentation. Before we begin, I would like to request my viewers not to forget to subscribe our channel if you look for such updates and tutorials. Also, to understand the standards completely, do watch our videos till the last as every point shall be important and relevant. So, to begin with, first let's see what is audit documentation. Audit documentation means the record of audit procedures performed, relevant audit evidence obtained and the conclusions the auditor reached. Next comes the objective. The main objective of this standard is to ensure that the auditor prepares on a timely basis audit documentation that provides a sufficient and appropriate record of the basis for the auditor's report and evidence that the audit was planned and performed in accordance with the international standards on auditing and applicable legal and regulatory requirements. Yet another objective of audit documentation is to enhance the quality of the audit and facilitates the effective review and evaluation of audit evidences obtained and conclusions reached. After the objectives comes the purpose of audit documentation which essentially is to provide written or documented evidence regarding different audit related matters and provides evidence of the basis for a conclusion that auditor's overall objective has been achieved and that the audit planning and performance was done in accordance with the international standards on auditing applicable laws and regulatory requirements. Other important purposes that the audit documentation serves are assisting the audit team in planning and performing the audit. For example, issues observed in previous and current audit can help them plan further procedures to be adopted, assisting the team members responsible for supervision to direct and supervise the audit work and to discharge their review responsibilities, enabling the audit team to be accountable and answerable for the work performed, retaining a record of such matters which can be of significance for the future audits, making it easy to conduct the quality control reviews in accordance with the international standards on auditings or other applicable guidelines, and making it possible to conduct external evaluations and inspections in the light of applicable frameworks during or after the engagement. Now comes the question, what should be the nature of audit documentation? So the audit documentation may be recorded on paper or on electronic or other media. It includes, for example, audit programs, analysis, summaries of significant matters, letters of confirmation and representations, checklists, correspondences including emails and other concerning significant matters. Abstracts or copies of the entity's records, for example, significant and specific contracts and agreements may be included as part of the audit documentation if considered appropriate. Don't be under an impression or have any misconception that audit documentation can be a substitute for the entity's accounting records. It could never be. The auditor ordinarily excludes from audit documentation superseded drafts of working papers and financial statements, notes that reflect incomplete or preliminary thinking, previous copies of documents corrected for typographical or other errors, and duplicates of any documents. Next comes the form, content, and extent of audit documentation. I repeat, form, content, 
and extent of audit documentation. The auditor shall prepare audit documentation that is sufficient to enable an experienced auditor having no previous connection with the audit to understand the nature, timing and extent of the audit procedures performed to comply with the international standards on auditing and applicable legal and regulatory requirement. The results of the audit procedures performed and the audit evidence obtained and significant matters arising during the audit, the conclusions reached thereon and significant professional judgments made in reaching those conclusions. The form, content and extent of audit documentation depends on the number of factors such as the size and complexity of the entity, the nature of the audit procedures to be performed, the identified risks of material misstatement, the significance of the audit evidence obtained, the nature and extent of the exceptions identified, the need to document a conclusion or the basis for a conclusion not readily determinable from the documentation of the work performed or audit evidence obtained, and the audit methodology and tools used. Now let's discuss documentation of the identifying characteristics of specific items or matters. During the audit procedure, the auditor should record those essential documents which help in identifying the characteristics of specific items being audited or reviewed. Identifying characteristics will vary with the nature of audit procedure adopted and the item or matter being tested. For instance, in case of detailed substantive test of salary payments, the auditor may identify the documents and records required for complete verification of the payments in details which might include employment contracts, salary records, attendance register, statutory compliances and any other document related to payment of salaries. In case of systematic sampling test, the auditor may identify the documents selected by recording their source, starting point and sampling intervals such as while scrutinizing the cash book of the organization, the auditor may get hold of the cash ledger and on the basis of volume and size of the payments, he or she may decide to verify specific months where either higher number of transactions are done or the amount involved is high. Similarly, such audit documentation required for inquiry or observation based testing has also been laid out in the standard. Then comes the documentation of matters arising after the date of the auditor's report. So this is very important. If in exceptional circumstances, the auditor performs new or additional audit procedures or draws new conclusions after the date of the auditor's report, the auditor shall document the circumstances encountered, the new or additional audit procedures performed, audit evidence obtained and conclusions reached and their effect on the auditor's report. This is very important. Effect on the auditor's report and when and by whom the resulting changes to audit documentations were made and reviewed. Next comes the documentation of significant matters and related significant professional judgments. Judging the significance of a matter requires an objective analysis of the facts and circumstances. Examples of significant matters include matters that give rise to significant risks, results of audit procedures indicating that the financial statements could be materially misstated or a need to revise the auditor's previous assessment of the risks of material misstatement and the auditor's responses to those risks, circumstances that cause the auditor's significant difficulty in applying necessary audit procedures and findings that could result in a modification to the audit opinion or the inclusion of an emphasis of matter paragraph in the auditor's report. Sometimes a summary named completion memorandum is prepared that summarizes the matters identified and how it was resolved. It may contain references to other supporting documents. This helps in conducting quality assurance review being conducted efficiently and effectively. Another important aspect of the standard is identification of preparer and reviewer where while documenting the auditor should record who performed the audit work and the date such work was completed and who reviewed the audit work performed and the date and extent of such review. At last comes the assembly of the final audit file. 
all the audit documentation i repeat all the audit documentation are assembled in a file named as audit file and auditor is required to complete the work related to the assembling of the audit file on timely basis usually the completion of audit file should not take more than 60 days after the date of auditor's report once the assembly of audit file is complete the auditor shall not make any changes to the documentation until the end of the retention period which is usually not be shorter than five years from the date of auditor's report however during the retention period auditor may take administrative changes to the audit file for example sorting collating and cross-referencing working papers deleting or discarding superseded documents signing off audit file assembly checklists documenting evidence which was obtained discussed and agreed with the members of the engagement team before the date of auditor's report here it's important to note that after the assembly of final audit file is completed the auditor should not delete or discard audit documentation before the end of its retention period under various statutory provisions of the laws if at all the auditor is required to modify the existing audit documentation then regardless of the nature of the modification the auditor should document when and by whom they were made and where applicable reviewed the specific reasons for making them and their effect if any on the auditor's conclusions so that's all about audit documentation thank you for watching our video and for more such updates and tutorials, keep tuned to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe it and put your notifications on. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you.